opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers. Stay up to date with all things cricket. Subscribe to Crick Boss's YouTube channel and press that bell icon now. On the face of it, this is a five-game T20 series between the West Indies and India. A team that has a ridiculous record in bilateral T20 internationals. You look at the last 15, only one loss and that too in Sri Lanka when really anybody who claimed to be Indian could have been dragged into the side. Not an excuse, but that, that was the reality. Up against a West Indies side, you look down the list of players West Indies have available to them and you wonder what on earth are they doing playing stage one of the T20 World Cup. But that's because they don't always pick the best possible side. People are not always available. So it's going to be an intriguing contest from that point of view. But as far as I'm concerned, yes, it's a series that needs to be won. But it is the start of auditions for the T20 World Cup. India have 16 games. The interesting thing is not one of those 16 will be in Australian condition. So India have got to make good. What are the factors that you want to be looking at in this series? Most important is Rishabh Pant still going to open. We're all very excited when Pant opened. You need a left-hander in the middle. That'll go away if Pant opens the batting. But you can see why they want him to open the batting. Because his record against pace tends to be a lot better than his record against spin. So that is one factor. What that means is if KL Rahul comes back and Pant succeeds as opener, are they going to continue with Pant and play Rahul in the middle order? Will they play him at three? There's already a log jam at three and we do not know the answer to Virat Kohli as yet. I'll say this again and again. I so wish Virat had played these three one day. It would have been perfect for him to get back into rhythm. But there's no point talking about what isn't. So that, that is the first thing. I think there's an audition going on between uh, Shreyas Ayer, Deepak Kudda. Kudda's off spin in that last one day international, the second one, don't underestimate that because suddenly you will have an extra off, off break bowling option that can have implications for your second spinner. So Kudda, I think, has the wood over Shreyas Ayer just now, whose ODI record got more constructive against uh, than it is in T20 cricket. I think Surikumar Yadav burns his place then. I think it's a big series for Dinesh Karthik. I love the role Dinesh Karthik is playing. But at number six, he has five games. I think he's got to finish two out of those five. And if it means the odd day coming into bat in the 12th, 13th over, so be it at, at number six. But he'll want to finish two or three of those games because he will be aware. He's a very uh, smart person. He will be aware that Hardik Pandya can play his role and that will allow another batsman to come in the top five. So effectively, he's competing against a player in the top five. So that is something to watch out for, for all of you. Is there another option to Ravindra Jadeja? This has implications for the balance of the side. You could look at an Akshar Patel, you could look at an Ashwin, but you want Jadeja's batting at seven because this Indian team is playing very differently from the way they did at the T20 World Cup. If they are going to go bang, 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 as Rohit Sharma has already demonstrated, you need Jadeja's batting at seven. If you need Jadeja's batting at seven, you have to look at Hardik Pandya's fitness carefully because if Hardik Pandya is not fit, Jadeja doesn't play. He's no longer a four overs bowler, at least in current form. So keep an eye out for that aspect as well. And finally, the second, the second spinner. India have given themselves so many options. Is the second spinner going to be Bishnoi, who's really a, a wrist-spinning off-break bowler, bowls very well to left-handers, has that big benefit? Are they going to look at Ashwin, whose T20 high record is just incredible since the last time he, uh, you know, India played a major T20 tournament? Are they going to look at Kuldeep as well? So, I, I think two out of these will get a game here. Rahul doesn't believe, uh, in, or neither does Roy, in changing after every game. And the last thing is, I wish Mohamed Shami was in this side, but he'll get a lot more games because I think Shami, Bhuvi, Harshal, you're going to play two out of those three. So I'd, I'd like to see whether Harshal Patel, who's giving you overs at the end, cements his place and whether Bhuvi continues his form, which is such good news. Given that Bumrah is not playing this game, I expect Harshdeep to get at least three games. And in those three games, to see whether he can be that left-handed option that India so desperately need in a team that is so full of right-handers. So, there you are. Those are the things I want to look forward to. If I had to say, what is the one thing I'm looking forward to among all these? It is the approach. Are India going to go bang, bang and say, right, come what may, we're not going to ease up. And if it means the odd day, we are 130 all out, so be it. So, there you are. An interesting series with a storyline beyond the most obvious bilateral contest.